All right, hello everyone. Uh, sorry I've been away for a little while. I haven't done a tutorial uh, nearly as often as I was planning on doing. Uh, things just got a little bit busy. But I'm back and I've got another tutorial for you. I've had some people ask for some specific ones. Um, one of them in particular is to do with cutting out hairs and things like that. I'm going to come back to that one probably with our next tutorial and I'm going to do this one mostly because this image that you see here, I'm going to explain a lot of things about planning, which is one of the things that came up quite a bit in the comments and questions from the last couple of tutorials that I've done. So we're going to create this image today. Um, <clears throat> Sorry about that. This image was very easy uh, to do. And it's all just down to having the finished image in your mind before you set out to shoot anything at all. So this family here, they wanted portraits that, well, it's hard. I have a new portrait brand called Extraordinary Portraits. Go feel free to check it out. It's portraitsbygeorge.co.uk. Uh, in that brand, I try to capture the true essence of a family and they fill out a questionnaire and things like that and it gives me an idea of what they like. Uh, this was one of three or four different images we took on the day but this family basically they love travel, they love adventure um, and their son is obsessed with music and cars as well. So I had this image in my head. I wanted to kind of be modeled after the new B&Q adverts for those of you in the UK. Um, and I think I kind of achieved that. But since I had the idea in my head from the get-go, it made everything a lot easier to do. And putting this image together for the finished version was very simple. So since I knew this is what I wanted, I wanted them standing on like a hill or something. I, I, I wanted a very small amount of foreground grass and a lot of sky behind them to give it that big, bold look. One of the other things with that is shooting very, very low. Since I knew that I wanted them on like a hill, I had to shoot them at a really low perspective. And if we look at one of the shots straight out of camera from them, you can see I've got him standing on this little trolley. And the reason for that was to get him up a little bit higher so I could get low, camera on a tripod, shooting them all from that same height. They all stood on that little trolley and blam, we got the good height. I then knew I had it. Well, let me back up. Normally when I talk about doing composites, I'll say that you need to make sure everything's shot from the same height. And that is true. And I did that with the three subjects in this photo. However, the background is not. And I'm going to explain why now. So this is the grass that you see in that photo not even close to being shot at the same perspective. However, I knew I wanted this to look like a hill. And if you've got a good photo of a field shot at about where you would shoot your subjects for a waist up photo, that horizon line will make it look like a hill. So I knew I had this photo in my uh, stock library of photos that I've taken. This is a very old photo actually. I think. This photo was taken nearly four years ago, but I knew I had it. So I knew that this is what I wanted to, to use for the photo. And as I said, I knew this horizon line was going to work good for looking like a hill. Anyways, I'm babbling on a bit much about that stuff. <clears throat> Let's just dive into it and I'll start explaining things as I go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of create the background. We've got our hill here. And we've got my photo of clouds that I've taken here. Now, see, this one was shot from a much lower perspective. And you can see the horizon line down here. It just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't really work for a hill, besides the fact that it's shot at a very wide angle. And you can see the lens distortion swooping, kind of curving it around there. Um, that's why I've taken from like a waist height image that will give you the hill look. This was shot really low and pointed up not going to work for a hill, but it's going to be a great sky. <clears throat> so we're going to take the sky using the move tool, which is V on your keyboard, and we're just going to drop it into this 
image here. And then we're just going to transform and you can see how old this background photo is because it's bigger than, than this one um, that was shot with my old camera, that background. But we're just going to get it into place. If we look at our opacity, we just want to make sure that our new horizon is well below the horizon that we want. So I'm actually going to scooch this up a little bit, probably to about right there. And you can see these trees here. We don't want them to go into that. So that looks good. Bring our opacity back up. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, something's up with my throat right now. Right, and this is really, really, really simple. We, we don't need to do anything fancy with this. So we're just going to turn this off really quick. What we're going to do is we're going to, if you hit V on your keyboard again, and you move your cursor up into the ruler here, click and drag down, you'll drag down a uh, guide. So we've got a guide there now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my marquee tool and just select all this area and it will snap to that guide. I'm going to make sure our new sky layer is selected over here and we're just going to create a layer mask on that. Now when we turn that on, oh, and you know what? I did that completely wrong. <laughs> Let's back up. I put the guide in the wrong spot. We want to move the guide down to below all of our trees and everything in the horizon. Again, grab the marquee tool, do that, it's going to snap to your guide, make sure you're on the layer of the new sky, hit the layer mask button, and then when we activate it, you can see we've got sky. And you can see this is already looking a bit like a field, like a hill. <clears throat> and part of that is because the sky is shot so wide it, and shot looking up. So we've got two things working in our favor here. The sky is shot from the perspective of looking up and it's shot really wide. So when we use this edge of the field here, because the sky's perspective is us looking up at it, it's gonna have, it's gonna accentuate that look that we want, which is that this is on a hill. But that's it, that's all we're gonna do with this right now. It's fine. Now we're gonna get our subjects into place. So we'll go to this one here, which is the, our uh, female, the mum in the subject, in the photo. And it's going to be very easy to cut out. We're going to use the quick selection tool, which is W over here on your, or over here on uh, the menus, the tools palette over there. If you haven't used the quick selection tool before, you adjust the size the same way you do as a brush. So on your keyboard, that's the right and left brackets. And you just paint what you want to select. And it will always automatically add. So once you left, lift up, it will make its selection and once you start painting again it automatically adds to your selection and if we need to in a minute I'll show you how to remove from the selection but you just simply hold down the alt key we're just gonna do this fairly rough first I always just go over the basic outline rough first and then I'll go in and I'll fine-tune everything so I mean you can see it's not great right now but that's fine like I said I like to do a rough selection and then I'll come in and fine-tune it all okay so that's the bottom half yeah, and you can see over here we've got nothing over here so now we've got to select that just get that into there all right now we'll start fine-tuning it so first we'll remove this bit so you hold down the alt key and then it removes from the selection and now we just need to zoom in and make sure we've got everything covered we're not going to worry about the hair we're going to worry about all the rest of the edges though, so make sure we've got everything here. And you can see here we're just barely missing a bit of her fingers there, so we're just going to bring those back in. Move down, make sure all the trousers are selected. See, when, when you got white trousers with a, a grayish background, this background's not as gray as I normally would have it. Um, and that's just down to distances. But when you got white trousers on like a gray or white background, you're inevitably going to miss some bits of the trousers. So we're just going to make sure we get that taken out of the selection as well. All right, backpack is all looking good. Got just a little weird thing here, but I'm, I'm not going to overly concern myself with the bottom of this. And I'll explain why when we get to that step. Um, and you'll see why it's a fairly nifty little trick that we're going to use with this
photo in particular. Um, I do want to try to get this strap, though. There we go. All right. And I will just try to get that as good as possible here. But again, I'm not overly concerned with the very bottom of these cutouts. And like I said, I'll show you. I'll show you that once we start putting everybody into place. Right, so everything's looking pretty good. You can see the gray just from a focus issue there from the depth of fields not selected right. Make sure we get this. I think that looks good. A little bit here. And I'm gonna have to go in and just take that back out. Looking good. See, now this bit here is always a little bit tricky. This is where our rim light is just highlighting the edge of the sweater, or this jumper. Um, and because it's a jumper, it's got little, little fibers on it, and those catch the rim lights more so than t-shirts and things like that, and you do have that problem with jumpers more than anything. Like, that all looks pretty good. So now, the next thing we do want to do is we just want to kind of, we want to get a, as much of this hair to look as good as possible. The nice thing about this, her hair is not blowing around. It's not curly hair. It's just straight hair. So it's going to be pretty all right, no matter what we do. But you want to hit the refine edge button up in the top there. It's going to come up automatically with a brush. And what we're going to do with that is just paint the edges of her hair. So we'll go down one side here, lift up. It will think and it will kind of refine that edge a little bit. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side over here. And now this time we saw that little piece of hair coming out this way. So we're going to go all the way out to that. Let go and it's going to think and it's going to refine the edge a bit. Now we're going to zoom out a little bit. Little other things I do with this is then I will do a little bit of feather which is going to make it look horrible, but then we're going to increase the contrast and that's going to sharpen that feather back up. But what that does is it just kind of makes sure that we've got no weird edges on the, on the body. And I don't really like how this looks here. And it might just be her hair is just not lit. I'm just going to paint there again and just see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks much better. Okay. So that looks good. Sorry, my computer's lagging a little bit behind here now while I'm recording. All right, so we're going to put this selection out to a layer mask, and we're going to hit OK. And it's going to think about it and hopefully do it fairly quickly, because there's nothing worse than when you're watching a video having to listen to somebody just talk nonsense while your computer thinks about things and it didn't accept my okay. That was my fault, I apologize for that. All right, so we've got our cutout of the mum. You can see it looks pretty good. So we're just gonna take her, the V using the move tool, which is V and your keyboard, and we're gonna move her over into our new picture. One thing I'll add, um, when you're doing composite images like this, oh, I, unless I'm, I always try to shoot my backgrounds, both horrors, uh, landscape and portrait. Um, but what I would definitely suggest, if you had to choose one, always go landscape. And then when you shoot your subjects, always go portrait. You can take a portrait oriented subject and place them into a landscape oriented photo, but you cannot do the opposite. So just a little bit of advice for you. So she's a little bit big, obviously, for this photo. So we're going to just shrink her down a little bit until she looks good. And we're just going to roughly place her in place. Because that guide's there, even though you can't see it, if I bring it back, it's automatically kind of snap into that guide. So that looks like a good height for me. So we're just going to hit OK. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video for a moment. I'm going to go cut out our other subjects. I don't want you to sit here and watch me do the same thing again because we're going to do some more tweaking on the cutouts now that they're on the on the picture, but there's nothing different about cutting out those other two uh, than there was with her. So I'm going to pause this really quick and I'll be back in a minute. 
Okay, sorry about that. So we're back. I've cut out the other two subjects and I placed them in the photo in the positions they're going to go. Now one of the things, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but can you see there's a line going right here. Now if we look and I toggle on and off the mum, it vanishes. What that is, and this is, you'll run into this when you do um, portrait subjects and into landscape backgrounds or just a cutout that is smaller than the image that it's going into. That's the edge of the mask. If you click on the mask and you hit the uh, backslash, backslash key, it will highlight the mask. What we're going to do here is we're just going to grab a black brush and we're just going to remove that edge. We just need to soften it. It's because it's a hard edge that line is showing up. You hit the L key, it's gone. You can see now that line's gone. And we'll just do, I've done it with these ones already, but just to make sure, see like him, uh, I'll just make that a little bit softer over there. But that just ensures we don't have <coughs> those lines because they will be in there. And when you sharpen images later, they'll be even more noticeable. But anyways, right, so we've got our subjects on here. What we're gonna do really quick first is hit shift and then select all three of them, hit command on a Mac, G, control on a PC, G, put them in a group, and we're just gonna call that group uh, family. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn them off really quick, and we're gonna select the mask on our sky. We might have to do some tweakings with this, but we're gonna see now really quick how it looks. What I'm, let me explain what it is we're going to do. If we zoom in here, you can see it's just a hard line between the sky and the ground. And that's just not realistic looking. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our brushes. And if you have the normal default brush set loaded, um, when you scroll down, you can see these two little grass looking things here. We're going to select this grass one. We need to go over to the brush properties and we need to look at some things here. So we're gonna turn off color dynamics and we need to look at shape dynamics. And the one that we're looking for here is size jitter. Right now it's at 100% and what will happen, well, I'll show you what will happen. If we go over here, where's that brush? Oh yeah, there it is. So if we were to paint white, what that's gonna do is allow some of the mask through, right? And we do that and you can see it's, it's too big. Um, but it's not really showing you that it changes size quite, quite dramatically. Um, I, but I'm going to turn it down to reduce the amount of times it changes size, basically. We want it to scatter. Scatter is fine. Transfer, to be honest, I have no idea what that does. It's tick, but everything's at zero, so I'm just leaving it. And smoothing, um, we have no options for, but I always leave that on. And we're good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this layer mask again for our sky. Let me just rename that sky so we know what it is. We're going to put on a black brush. We're going to zoom in. Start over at the edge. Start with this nice small brush. And we're just going to go like, oop. Uh, make sure you're actually on the mask, not the layer. And we're just going to paint on the edges here until we remove the line. What this is doing is it's allowing some of our grass layer through to the sky layer, but in the shape of grass. So it gives us a realistic looking transition between the horizon and the sky. Just a little bit more, and I mean, it, this is a little bit time consuming because you have to go back and forth many, many times because because it's jittering and it's scattering it's gonna leave spaces where you'll have flatness. And you just wanna make sure that all your flat areas are covered. And just go all the way across with this. It's one of those handy little tricks that, you know, if you never knew this brush was there, um, you might have been doing this in like a much, much, much harder way. Um, and once you realize that, that this brush exists, uh, it's, it's an, it opens up a world of, of opportunity for you really, because it's, 
there's so many things you can do with this little, you know, any shape brush. That's the, that's the key. Remember when you're doing masks and, you know, layer masks for different things in composite, compositing images, um, you don't have to use a round brush on your layer mask. And I think that's kind of a common misconception that people have. Or it, I guess maybe this misconception is not the right word. It's one of those things that people don't think about. They just think brush, right? And they're just going to paint with a round, soft brush on the layer mask. Once you kind of, that light bulb goes off in your head that you can paint with, you know, any brush under the sun, um, it makes masking uh, a whole new world. You know, you got leaves and things. There's leaf-shaped brushes that you can use. Um, there's all sorts of different brushes and different things you can do with just having different uh, brush on your layer mask but again like I said it's one of those things that some people just it, 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 the thought just never occurs and you know for me before I, I learned this it was one of those things that never even occurred to me that you know that was a possibility so you see now if we look at the photo there's no harsh line between sky and horizon we bring the family back up you can see again the horizon and the sky look good, but now they don't look good. And again, this is very, very easy to fix. But before we do that, we're going to just add a little bit of shadow to them. Most of the shadow is going to get covered up. You'll see why in a minute, but it's good to have it there. So on the layer, a new layer underneath the family group, but above the sky layer, go back to your normal, your normal brush and get it on black. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna paint a little bit of shadow underneath their feet you know not not a lot you, you can see I was playing in earlier uh, before you came back I realized I needed to fix some things um, so I might have given away what we're gonna do next <laughs> but anyways um, so we're just gonna paint a little bit of shadow underneath wherever they're touching the grass so them and the suitcases obviously some reason I started in the middle so we've got to go back over and do the mom all the way on the other side again just little little shadow underneath everything that's touching the ground here there we go now we're gonna zoom out we're gonna add a layer mask to that Reduce our brush's opacity down to 20%, make our brush nice and big, and we're just going to paint away some of that shadow until it looks more realistic, because, I mean, obviously that was 100% black and that didn't look good. That looks pretty good. We're going to do one more pass over it, um, and now those shadows look pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to the family, and you can do this one of two ways. Um, the way that I like to do it because we have more control is to do this on each individual layer. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did on the sky layer to, you know, increase that horizon um, sky look. And we're going to do that for our subjects and the grass. So we're going to start with the mum, select her layer mask. We're going to go back down to our grass brush. Just make sure everything is the same over here, which it is. I'm going to zoom in on her feet. Now this we want much smaller. We don't want this to be ridiculous. But we're just going to do the same. Uh, oh, make sure your brush opacity is at 100%. We're just going to do the same thing just along the bottom of the feet. You can see that just makes her look like she's actually standing in the grass. Same thing with that little bit of thing there. And the same thing along bottom of the backpack. Now like I said most of that shadow is being covered up and I knew that was going to happen but you never know what's going to poke through so you have to make sure you do it. So next up on our list over here is the little guy over here. So again the same thing. Just going to paint little bits around the bottoms of his shoes and then around the bottom of the suitcase. And 
the same thing, same thing over here. And this just makes it look as if they are 100% for sure standing in that grass. And then we zoom in, we do the same thing for our guy here, for the dad. And the more kind of sporadic you make it, you know, we let, let bits of red peek through there, um, the better it's going to look. So the same thing here with his shoe there. All right, and there you go. And that looks pretty good. And I actually, looking at this now, um, yeah, I'm going to paint over, I'm going to reduce that shadow. And actually, instead of doing it that way, I'm just going to reduce the opacity over here. The shadows are just still a bit too dark. That's better. All right, so subjects are in place. Grasses are done. Grasses are masked. Everything's looking good. We're going to do a couple of things, and then we're just going to kind of finish this off. The first thing we're going to do is we're, there's I can see some lens dust on the sky. So I'm going to select the sky layer, make sure that's selected, grab my healing brush tool. See, and if we zoom in. We can see it, we got some some lens dusts uh, to get rid of in the sky. Or sensor dust even, sorry, I don't know why I'm saying lens dust. Um, this picture actually, right after I took it, I saw this and I went and cleaned my sensor like immediately because it's it was quite bad on this photo. Um, this photo, this sky photo, by the way, is not all that old. It's probably, well, I say not all that old. It's probably about a year to a year and a half old. But this uh, image that we're using for the grass is is very old. I think it's probably about four years old. It was taken on my old, old, old Nikon D50. Um, right now, we're going to do, we're going to get rid of these tire marks, uh, these tractor marks, whatever these were down here. Um, and that, again, is going to be very easy to do. Select your background layer. We're going to get our healing brush tool again. We're just going to select an area from the edge over here. I'm just going to paint across there. Now we're going to run out of room. I'm just going to think we're just going to grab an area from there again. And then one more over here again. Now we got a little bit of like repeating patterns going on, so we're just going to get rid of some of them. And then the same thing here, we're just going to grab from there, and just swoop down, get rid of this tractor. I think it's a tractor trail, I'm not really entirely sure, but um, we need to get rid of it either way. So, all right. All right, that looks good. Let's bring everything back up. Okay, so a couple things we need to do. One is we need to enhance well, there is no light source in our picture, uh, but you can see clearly when I had them in the studio, I used three lights, two lights behind them, one light as the key light. So we need something to kind of answer the question as to why those rim lights are on them. So below the family group layer again, we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to call this one, we'll call this one sky light. What we're going to do is we're going to get big, fat, soft brush. So make sure your opacity is down to, oh, for some reason mine's up all the way. Our hardness is down all the way. I'm going to get a white brush and make this huge, well, actually not huge, probably about like about there. Oh, what just happened? Oh, you know what? I'm not on. Oh, I tell you what. <laughs> Make sure your brush is selected and not your clone, your healing brush tool. Um, make this really, really big, soft, got white, make it about that big, and we're just going to put one click right there. And that just gives us a light source, so to speak, in the background. <clears throat> now, what I don't really like is how it's affected the grass. It doesn't look right to me. So we're going to add a layer mask. We're going to reduce our brush opacity down to 20%. We're going to grab a black brush, and we're just going to paint over that a little bit. Obviously, the light's going to affect the grass a little bit, but remember, they're on a quote-unquote hill. So 
the sunlight isn't going to be falling onto this side of the hill, which is why I didn't really like how that looked. So we're just going to get rid of most of that light. And now you can see there's lights behind him. If we wanted to, we could, we could make that stronger by duplicating the layer and then reducing the opacity a little bit, which is what I think I'm going to do. And I think that looks pretty good. Right, so before we move on, because now we're pretty much done with assembling of the photo. Um, now we need to make sure that everything kind of looks really good. So we're going to zoom, before we do anything else, we're going to zoom in and just look at our selection around her, around the mom, make sure it looks good. Now, if you look right here, I don't know if you can really see it, there's a little bit of a black line. We're going to get rid of that. So we're going to make sure we're selected on her layer. Make sure we have a brush. Make sure our brush is at 100% opacity. And up here, you can change the blending mode of your brush. We're going to change it to overlay. You can see if I paint here, that black edge disappears. And what that is, is it's just a little bit of like fringing from when we, feather, from when we feathered our selection. Um, we're only really going to take care of it where we can see it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see her hair looks good. I think the hair looks good. We got lucky with this one really in that she, uh, she has very straight hair. So we didn't have any issues, um, with, with stray hairs and things like that. So that all looks good. I think, I think she looks good. And I would say I'm going to go look at the other two guys, but I've already done them. <laughs> I apologize when I cut them out. It was one of those habits. I cut them out and I just did it when I placed them in the photo um, naturally. So anyways, we're ready to go now. Um, the comp composite's really, really put together already. So we just need to make it look good and finish it off. Now, a lot of these steps are gonna be ways that I do things just because of my look. Some of them though are crucial. Uh, so stick around, make sure you pay attention. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is make the colors match. There's not a whole lot that really needs to be done with this photo because we're not, the, the, the colors already kind of work. I mean, if you look at the photo like this right now, you think, you would think that looks good. Everything's tied together. There's not a lot we really need to do with the colors. But sometimes you do get, you know, backgrounds and subjects that, you know, they just don't, they just don't work. You know, and not maybe not so much that they don't work, but there's some subtle differences and you need to make those tones match a little bit. There's a couple of ways you can do that. One is um, if you made a stamp layer now, which would be Shift-Alt-Command-E on a Mac, Shift-Alt-Control-E on a PC, um, and then go to Filter, go to Filter, Blur, Average. And what that's doing is it's creating a color-filled layer of the average color of the scene. With that, you would take your blending mode, set it to color, and then reduce your opacity to around 20%. And you can see before, after, it's not a massive difference, but it what it's really doing is it's removed a lot of the saturation from the subjects to make it match the scene a bit better. Um, I actually might stick with that, but for now I'm gonna turn it off because the other method I was gonna use was gonna be a gradient map. And over here is a gradient map. What we want here, let me turn it, let me turn it off really quick. If we look at our um, image, we don't really have a lot of colors in the shadows and the highlights because there's there's not a lot uh, going on, so to speak, in, in the background where you have loads of different shadows and things. So obviously in the highlights, we've got a white light source. We didn't use yellow, we used white. So we know our highlights are gonna be white and for our shadows, we're gonna go with what is a tr more traditional, um, and that is blue. So on the gradient map, this side over here, the left side is your shadows. I should have reversed this before I did it, but that's okay. So we're gonna pick a blue-ish tone to our shadow, fairly dark, uh, we'll go around there. And then for our highlights, we are gonna go with white because we have white light source in our picture. So that's going to be our gradient map. We're going to click OK. Turn it back on. You can see it looks awful. That's fine. And I actually don't think that blue is dark enough. But if we set the blending mode to overlay, you can see that looks pretty horrible. If we set it to soft light, 
it looks a bit better. Um, and then we reduce the opacity a bit. Um, for some reason, it's not reducing that way that it normally does. Reduce the opacity. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks good. So I've got it around 44% set on soft light. Um, let me just see if I darken up that blue a little bit because it just, uh, I don't think it's quite dark enough. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, see, and that just kind of brings all the tones matching a bit better. So that looks pretty good. Now we just need to add some contrast and things to it. Um, one of the things I will do is add, take, add some detail to it. Um, there's a couple ways I do that. One is with this NYX Color Effects down here under Color Effects 4 Pro, Color Effects Pro 4, you have Detail Extractor. I tend to use that one quite a bit. However, um, I think I did this without even saying anything to you guys. Um, I'm going to create a stamp layer. So again, Shift Alt Command E on a P Mac, Shift Command Shift Alt Control E on a PC, and then I've got you know Topaz Labs. So I go to Topaz Labs, Topaz Detail Three. For this image, um, I'm going to go with Topaz Detail instead of Detail Extractor. Detail Extractor, yes, you can adjust the saturation and things. It affects the saturation quite a bit. But I also find that Detail Extractor, even when you adjust the settings and lower settings and things, it just does too much. Um, most of the time I'm happy with what Detail Extractor does. But on this image, I want to have a little bit more control. And with Topaz Detail, you have bucket loads of control. So I'm going to increase small details quite a bit. Okay, maybe not that much. Um, and the way this would work is kind of in reverse logical order. So you'll want to do more with small and then less with medium and then even less with large. Um, and you'll see if I take large and I crank it up, you can see just how rubbish it starts looking. Um, so small, that looks pretty good. Just bring up mediums a little bit. And then large, I'm probably hardly going to really move. And then you can see this is the after, before, after, before. It's a rather subtle, um, Topaz detail is, is a bit more subtle, but it does a really good job. So we're gonna accept that, we're gonna click okay. Now if we zoom in, I actually think I might go back. Um, Cause my sky looks really, really, really noisy. So actually what we're gonna do, we're gonna delete that layer. We're gonna go back to our sky layer we're going to make it the only layer visible, and to do that, you hit Alt and then that layer. And Nick, again, has a really good one here called Define 2, which is a denoising filter. And you need to make sure you have only the layer selected that you want to denoise as your active layer, because otherwise it's going to apply it to the whole image. We only want it to apply it to the sky. The sky looks a little bit noisy. So it's going to automatically detect it. You can see in your little preview screen down here, this is before, this is after. And it usually does a bang on job of, of picking out what it needs to do. Now this is fairly important as well. When this is done, you need to make sure you drag that down and just place it above your sky layer. And then we can put everything else back, back on. And actually, we don't want that one. Okay. Now, we do our stamp layer again. And we're going to run our topaz detail again with a more noise-free sky. Because one of the problems is having noise in the sky. This detail extraction, so to speak, is going to, well, enhance that noise. And we don't want that. So, shall we for this to load? Normally, Topaz Detail is not a slow program, but whenever I'm doing videos, um, I use uh, I Show You for Mac, and it does eat a lot of memory, and it it's really slows down opening up of programs like this. So, bring that up a little bit, and you can see it looks a lot better in that sky already. One of the things we're probably oh, you know what? I'm in the wrong I'm in the wrong field over here. Sorry. It's already got our settings from the last time we used it here, so that's good. 
So before, after, before, after. You can adjust tone and exposure and everything in detail, but I never do. I just usually, I just use the detail um, sliders. So it brings that in and you can see again before and then after, it's just brought out some more detail, makes the image look better as a whole. Um, what this image is missing, even though our gradient map, if we go back, our gradient map adds just a little bit of contrast. The image as a whole is missing contrast. And there's a couple of different ways we can do that. One is with curves, which I never do. Um, I tend to use this method, which is a hue and saturation layer. And I'll set it to either multiply, which is too dark for what I want for this photo, or soft light. Um, soft light is looking pretty good. Obviously, it's far too strong. Um, and what I'm going to do here, I'll explain this as well. I'm only looking here. I'm only looking at the sky and the subjects. Because we can always mask other things out. Because right now it's made that grass way too dark. But we're gonna, we can just mask that back in. So I'm just trying to find something that looks good for the sky and them. And I think that looks pretty good. And I just want to see, is that banding? Oh, it's from the gray, from the, um, from our uh, light source thing. I think that looks pretty good. We've already got a layer mask here. So we're going to put our brush to 20%. Grab a big fat black brush and we're just going to, because it made this grass a bit too dark. It's added too much contrast to the grass. So we're just going to paint slowly down here on the grass. Oh, make sure you put your brush back to normal. Uh, because otherwise it won't be doing anything. And we're just going to paint back in some, paint away some of the effect of this on the grass because it was just made the grass too dark. And normally as well, I would say that this method really oversaturates the image, but we've reduced the opacity so much. Um, it hasn't really affected it all that much. I think it looks quite good as it is. Um, and then, you know, that would pretty much be it. I, I would say that's a finished, a finished photo. Um, so again, I hope you learned something on this. We, we haven't covered anything too different than the other composites tutorial that I've done, but it's good to do uh, composite tutorials on a few different um, images because they all have different quirks, and I might keep doing that for a little bit going forward. I think I will do the hair one coming up soon, but I probably will do a few more composite images because each one's different. So, I mean... Planning is, is your most crucial thing, um, and that comes down to the lighting and the perspective and all of that stuff. But anyways, if you have any questions, again, feel free to post them below. Uh, make sure you visit my website, www.gfphoto.co.uk. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that thing. I think Instagram and Twitter are both at George Fairburn. Until um, next time, talk to you later.